Okay, fans, I know it's been about a week and the R9 Fury X has been on the market, but we just got our hands on the card and now it's on our test bench and we've got those results for you. But before we do, let's take a look at the card, its specs, and then why at the end of the day, I think you're gonna really like the Fury X from AMD. It's our latest flagship card, baby. Let's get deeper. Geared towards the enthusiast gamer crowd, the Fury X is the creme de la creme of AMD's new lineup. And although there is a bit of rebranding here and there, the end result is a new card that offers a lot of the old and a bit of new technology. Yes, the Fury X is based on older generation technology, but it has new technology infused in it, which makes it an all new card. Now, in my opinion, everybody does rebranding, and yes, there is some rebranding here, but as long at the end of the day, the end user is saving money and you get new stuff and it's faster, hey, what's there really to lose? Just by visuals alone, you can definitely see a difference between the 295X2 or 290X, as the card is simply smaller than the previous gen cards by quite a bit. That in itself will be pleasing to builders as smaller cards will fit into more cases, making it more ergonomic and easier to integrate into many systems. Especially if you don't want to have to use a giant case to fit your video card in. Smaller is definitely better. Smaller systems are again on the rise, and the card being smaller will help AMD be integrated into many more systems than they would be having a giant sized card. That's for damn sure. Visually speaking, the reference base cards all have the familiar black and red design, sporting the AMD logo as well as the card's nomenclature on the card's top. The card also comes with its own self-contained closed-loop cooling system, just like we saw in the previous generation 295X2 card. Liquid cooling is definitely a feature that will help keep that card running cool and definitely help when it comes to overclocking. The shroud is made up of multiple pieces of aluminum die cast, finished in both black nickel mirror gloss and soft touch black and the card's components can be simply accessed by removing four sprues on the front plate. The Rio the Fury X features three display ports and a single HDMI port. This allows for multi-monitor technology, free sync, and all that good stuff that you love about AMD. The Fury X features a couple of LEDs that illuminate during operation, which is quite similar to the AMD R9 295X2. The first of these LEDs can be seen in the Radeon logo. Now this thing will glow red when the card is in operation. The next of these LEDs are located by the two 8-pin power connectors. There are eight of these LEDs. Now in a normal operating mode, all eight lights are lit up. When the card's in standby mode, only a single green light is lit up. Something pretty cool. Not that great, but hey, cool lights are cool lights. Also located on top of the card is a dual bio switch. Now if you don't know what that is, a dual bio switch is something that if you like crank your car up in overclocking and one of the BIOSes gets messed up and you can't use it, you can just switch to the other BIOS and you're up and running. You can also flash the other BIOS, making it usable again while you're in the other one. So having a dual BIOS switch is pretty cool. It means for those people out there who want to have two BIOSes, maybe you have one that you want to set that's totally overclocked, you only use once in a while, and one that's set in standard, with dual BIOSes you have that option. So overall, visually speaking, the R9 Fury X is pretty cool looking. It's pretty simple, yet it's still elegant. Not too gaudy, but yet not ugly either. But hey, looks are only one thing. Now let's see what's inside the card powering your games. Based on the now aging 28 nanometer process, the Fury X features 4096 stream processors with a maximum engine clock of 1050 megahertz and a compute performance of 8.6 teraflops. There are also 256 texture units with a fill rate of 268.8 gigatexels a second, as well as 64 ROPs running at 67.2 gigapixels a second. The Fury X is also the very first card from AMD to feature HBM, high bandwidth memory. This is going to really make games faster and real quick, let's just talk about that for people who don't know what it is. HBM is a new type of CPU GPU memory that vertically stacks memory chips like floors in a skyscraper. In doing so, it shortens your information commute. Those towers connect to the CPU or GPU through an ultra-fast interconnect called the Interposer. Several stacks of HBM are plugged into the Interposer alongside a CPU or GPU, and that assembled module connects to a circuit board. The really cool thing about HBM, even though it's not on-chip integrated memory, it still runs so fast due to the Interposer that it's indistinguishable from being that type of memory, which is really cool. The memory interface is also something not to scoff at. No longer do we see a 256-bit, a 512-bit, now we see a 4096-bit memory interface, which is simply incredible and should do all kinds of things that make the card run faster all around. The memory bandwidth is at 512 gigabytes a second and the memory speed is at 500 megahertz. 
AMD's Fury X has a power requirement of 275 watts and uses a pair of 8-pin power connectors to provide the juice to the card. These are also located on the top of the card along with the glowing name and the bio switch. Sounds good so far, right? The R9 Fury X is also the first card from AMD to support frame rate target control as well as virtual super resolution. Frame rate target control is a new feature which allows users to set a target maximum frame rate when playing a game in full screen mode. FRTC is for those times when your graphics card is actually providing more frame rates per second than the actual refresh rate of your monitor. So this way you can lock it. And when you lock it, it actually allows the GPU to run much cooler and much more efficient because obviously there's less taxing on the GPU. Now this is a really cool feature for people who don't have a really super duper high end monitor, but have a super duper high end video card. Your card can not only run smoother, it'll run cooler, quieter, and therefore longer. And also better overclocking. Virtual Super Resolution is another method of anti-aliasing that allows for smoother textures and less jagged polygons on games and applications that support it. But the really cool thing about Virtual Super Resolution is its ability to downscale or rescale 4K down to a native resolution of a lower kind. This means that you can take a 4K video, rescale it down to 1080p, and it's still going to have that awesome look. So you're going to get almost the quality of 4K at 1080p, and that's something really cool. There's also support for DirectX 12, Vulkan, and Mental Technologies. In the past, there's always been problems with multi-GPUs in one card or just using multi-GPUs in a system. Like I said earlier, DirectX 12 is fully supported by the Fury X, which means that when you're going to use this in the future, you're going to be able to use those crossfire systems and eliminate a lot of the problems you've seen in the past. Hopefully, everything will just be perfect and multi-GPU technology will now be fun. So we've seen what the card looks like. We've seen its specs. We've seen its new features. Now let's see how it tests. Before we do that, let's real quick take a look at the test system. And now let's rock out to the benchmark song and see how the Fury X does against the competition. Let's rock. caught me I was rocking out again guilty as charged so all right there you guys have it everything about AMD's latest flagship card the Fury X and you guys can see hey it's a pretty cool running card and I mean that in many ways not just as a pun the card ran on full bore at 58 Celsius now that's not hot at all compared to their previous generation 295 X2 which ran much much hotter 
All things in all, that's actually running pretty cool and it actually runs cooler than a 980 Ti. So that's thumbs up for AMD on that side. Now the price in this thing is going to be about $645. Yeah, you guys say it's more expensive, but yeah, kind of expensive, but also it's their flagship card, comes water cool, comes rate right overclock. I like those things. Those are all really good aspects about the card. Also, just as far as sheer performance goes, you guys can see that it keeps up with a 980 Ti or reference model. So that's pretty cool. I will admit I have seen some cards that have come out afterwards, non-reference cool cards that are really super fast. But as far as just the reference 980 Ti goes, the Fury X keeps up neck and neck, and that's solid overall. Now, there's going to be some people out there just like to hate, and they're going to say, oh, you know, this is a rebranding, screw them, I hate them. Everybody does rebranding, I'm kind of tired of hearing about it. At the end of the day, this card runs cooler, quieter, it's smaller, cheaper, faster. I mean, honestly, when at the end of the day, the end user is getting a better price for a better card, who cares if there's a little bit of old technology thrown in? Honestly, do you have to reinvent the wheel every time you make it? It's still a round wheel. So every time somebody comes out with a new tire, they're just rehashing, right? No, I don't think so. So all in all, at the end of the day, I think it's just a totally moot point means nothing. The Fury X is a very, very solid car. Now, if you people out there looking to buy one, down below that like button, we will have all the information. Hopefully you guys like this video. It's so you know what to do. So at the end of the day, the Fury X, it's here. Sorry it was a few days late. Took me a couple days extra just to get my car done. It's the way the tumbling thing went. But overall, I think this thing's a serious winner. AMD, hey, you've made a comeback for yourself. I'm sure your fans will be happy. We're pretty happy here at Tech of Tomorrow. Peace out. We'll see you guys all back here. If you're not sub, hey, you know what to do. Now let's listen to American Beautiful and peace out.